To all my podcast listeners, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to picture a great looking African American male holding a upset two year old daughter while trying to get a five year old who said they weren't hungry at home, but now that we're at their baseball game, they're starving. I want you to close your eyes and picture this guy dragging these young kids across this long park to get to this baseball game, hoping to keep the two-year-old calm while the five-year-old plays his little heart out during baseball. I want you to imagine having your cell phone in your hand and getting the J23 app notification saying that Union Times Jordan 1 Los Angeles are now live. I want you to imagine getting your cell phone clicking the links as fast as possible i want you to imagine selecting a pair your size and waiting in the infamous infamous internet line i want you to sit there keep your phone from falling asleep restrained from refreshing while holding this two-year-old who is constantly crying upset because she wants to go to the swings but you're trying to make sure your son sees you watching him play baseball imagine the screen refreshing on its own and taking you to another screen. This screen has your pair of shoes, it has the price, and just right below it, it has a message that says, our site thinks you're a bot, you're a bot. If you're reading this, try navigating more like a human. Mistake. Refresh. Do it again. Wait in the infamous internet line. The screen's refreshing again. Once again, our site thinks you're a bot. If you reading this, try navigating more like a human. It's got to be Safari. It's got to be Safari. I'm out here in the middle of a park. Safari is unreliable. Let me close out that window, close all my tabs, close out all my apps, all my windows, and open up Google Chrome. Google Chrome, never go wrong. Open up Google Chrome. Go to Twitter, J23. The link is now posted everywhere. It's now unionjordan.com, I believe. You go to it. Bouncing, two-year-old. Five-year-old is out there swinging his little heart out. Click it again. Got through again, and once again, our site thinks you're a bot. If you reading this, try navigating more like a human. Being told by a computer, which is essentially a robot, that you're acting like a bot might be the most asinine, annoying, possibly psych. I, I can't even fathom the words of the feelings I felt at that moment while I'm holding this two-year-old daughter and watching these kids play t-ball. I've actually calmed down. I have. And I'm trying to use a calm voice. I don't want to come on here yelling. I don't. This is the Sneak This Podcast. My cohort, George, you might as well know, might have noticed. He's not here right now if you're watching the video. He's not here. He's feeling under the weather. Shout out to George. He'll be back next week for sneaker, uh, the Sneak This Sneaker Awards. But imagine something that you've wanted, something that you feel it might be the best sneaker of the year, something that might be the best collaboration of the year, hands down, possibly. And you've gone through multiple times, but yet... A robot is telling you you're a robot. <sighs> it's not about not getting the shoe. I need people to understand that. I don't care what DJ Clark King came on this podcast, this very podcast, and told everybody about being positive about going in the cop releases and having a positive attitude about being able to cop. I don't care what a DJ Clark Kent says with regards to that. 
Nobody should go into a collaboration boutique type cell and have the mindset of you're gonna cop today. Something that's I think under under 5,000 pairs, under 6,000 pairs, nobody should have the mindset of thinking I'm about to go cop real quick. So it's not about not getting the sneakers. It's about the fact that I'm being told to navigate more like a human being. Now, there are some out there who will like to sit there and think, say, and assume, and they could very well be right that, you know, they're just joking. That's their way of being jokey or, you know, they were just trying to be funny or whatever. You're, it's not funny to me. It's just not funny at all. Like, because now granted, I'm talking, I'm not the only one that got this message. These are actual possible opportunities that people could have got through and, and gotten a pair. Like we actually gotten through. I have other people telling me that they got through the checkout part and half of the screen was blank. It wouldn't load up. You have got to be kidding me. Now, I'm not sitting here blaming Union. I'm not blaming Jordan. I'm not blaming any of these because... They use some type of site, plug-in, whatever it is. Now, who's responsible for that message to tell us, to tell me, to act like a human, navigate like a human, must be out of their minds. We're talking about something. Let's just take it a distant hole. Now, this is partly our fault as members of this sneaker community. This is partly the store's fault. This is partly the store's fault for um, making it this difficult in order to cop. The human aspect, you know, being respected as a human being when buying sneakers faded away about 15, 16 years ago. OK, maybe even longer back when you have people outside camped for days sleeping on the dirty streets, people pos getting shot, people fighting, people s waiting for other people to spend their hard-earned money and wait for around the corner and steal from them. The human aspect has left sneaker copping a long time ago. People love to bring up, I remember back in the day when people used to help out each other. That, that's been so long ago. And, and, and people need to come to the grasp of the understanding of the reality of when people were helping each other, they were helping you for a GR. Chill out. OK, don't act like, you know, cats were sacrificing their off white. I mean, I even I have people and friends who have helped me out with a GR, but they didn't help me out until they collected five pairs and they gave me number six. That's the community that we live in. And it's perfectly fine because it's a community that I'm part of. It's just an addiction. That's 100% what it is. So I'm not necessarily complaining about that, but I will not be told by a robot and a boutique that I need to navigate more like a human. I could be being dramatic. I could be. I might be acting dramatic. But I don't care. I don't care because it's not... The principle and the point of not getting the shoe. I The shoe, the shoe is the shoe. That's it. You give it a whirl and you don't get it. I would rather a message lying to me. Inventory issues. Sorry. Problem has occurred. Lie to me. Something went wrong. Try again. Refresh your screen and try again. Something. Don't tell me in this condescending way. And I know people hate to put tone on text message or messages, but there's tone to it and then it's grammatically incorrect who do you think you are you already got people sleeping outside people fighting over raffle tickets people doing a utter nonsense in order to be a part of this community just to have something that make them feel a little bit more special but yet you have a message to let me know you caught me I'm not navigating like a human. No, 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 no. This is for all the boutiques, all the places, all the brands and stuff like that. We appreciate the opportunity to cop. We do. But you can't tell us how to act, 
how to be, what we need to do, how sneaker copping, you know, people are uncivilized, how this and that. You can't do it. Now, I had a lot of plans to do. I mean, I've calmed down. Trust me. Like, I just couldn't fathom the thought of being told by a machine that's supposed to be catching other machines. Like, this is what's stupid. This is this what makes it even more stupid is that what if I was a bot? Like, is the computer going to tell the bot to what? What was the point of the message? All the message was was just like a slap in the face and a punch in the stomach. And for everybody out there who's saying stuff like, fam, you should have kept trying. Do you no duh. Do you think anybody stopped at the first time they saw that the first time? actually thought okay maybe i was doing something fat weird you know, some, i had me close it out real quick second time oh, man what the heck third time fourth time fifth time like no don't tell me and new sneakerhead alert i don't like republican sneakerheads we got get your life together sneakerheads we got thought sneakerheads and we got uh shoot i can't even think of all the sneakerheads that I, I, i've come up with names with the Republican sneakerhead is the person that their, their pair is already on hold. They got an actual plug. They get theirs for free. They got it. You know, they already got theirs, but yet they still got constant advice. Fam, you got to get out there and put the work in. You got to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. That's what it sounds like. Republican sneakerhead, get your sneaker, enjoy it, go sit down and shut up. I'm not interested in your point of view and, and you know, how you can, you know, hey, fam, you know, you got to go out there in the streets and you got to put in that groundwork. You got to go in there and chit chat. You got to go in there and get to know people. Bruh, shut up. All right. I'm not into Republican sneakerheads. Shut up. And you know what? They're starting to become. There's some few homies in California that, you know, hit us up like, you know, ways to try and cop online and stuff like that. And I appreciate them. And I'm not going to say their names. Only because I don't want you guys hitting them up, asking them a million questions. But they're just starting to get this big city bias that's like starting to really get annoying. Like, I get it, Union Los Angeles. I 100% get it. But, and this is not the same thing when they talk about equality and they talk about this and that. It's not the same thing. I know this. So I don't need the messages saying it's not the same thing, fam. I know this. But you would think, you know, I'm not even going to call it big city bias. I'm going to just call it major city bias because you know what? There are big cities and there's major cities. There must be only two major cities in the entire country, Los Angeles and New York. They get all the sneaker pass stuff on the sneaker app. They get all the scavenger hunts. They get all the limited releases. They get all the this. They get all the that. The all-star game doesn't even got to be in one of those cities, but they'll have a special thing going. Like, come on. Enough. Phoenix is a... Phoenix, Arizona is number five, number six largest major city in the entire country. I'm not sitting here expecting... Phoenix to be put on. Phoenix needs to take that responsibility for themselves, support the boutiques they have locally, support the shops that they have. We've had some good shops out here. We've had some dope spots out here that could have eventually had big collaborations or something. Granted, if we supported them a lot more than we have, we finally have an undefeated out here, which got the Kobe one Phoenix Suns colorway collaboration, whatever. But it doesn't make any sense for cities like Dallas, Memphis, Miami, um, you know, Boston, like, what are we, Lexington, Kentucky? Like, there are areas that are, uh, you know, Cleveland, Ohio, there are areas, Salem, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, you know, Seattle, there are areas that must subject themselves to buying strictly online, all right? And then when you get a message saying navigate more like a human, you can eat my shorts. Like, I couldn't have been the only one that wanted to break their phone. Like, I literally wanted to break my phone. Like, I wanted to rip the chain link fence out of the dugout at T-Ball. 
like I wanted to hand my daughter over to one of the other parents and say, could you hold her for a second while I went over there and tried to tackle a tree? Like I couldn't come to grips with the message. It's not the shoe. This ain't the first L. This ain't the first L we've come across. This ain't the first L I've gotten. It ain't going to be the last L. I didn't go into this thinking like, let me go ahead and cop this real quick. No, 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 no. I went in this like, it'd be dope if I copped. I mean, what do you want us to do, man? Like, I, the money is there. These people are making the money. Jordan Brand is making the money. Nike, these boutiques, these places are making the money. And yet, each release that is a constant fail, it's like they have no they, like it's like it's like once some a release fails now, it just leaves their brain and they just do the exact same thing next time. Like I I don't get it. Like, I don't understand at one point where somebody is going to finally figure this out or fix this or something. Like, even the whole process of being in line is annoying because, you know, I'd like to know exactly where I am in line. You know, it's like, don't refresh or you lose your spot. Man, shut up. If anybody thinks that they're actually in a spot in line on an app or a little boutique website, if you really think that like, yo, I might be seventh, you're smoking sticks. Like slap yourself in half. If you really sitting here like, I'm gonna tell everybody a secret. I'm gonna tell everybody a secret. It might not even be a secret. It might just be sheer luck. I cop almost off Adidas all the time. Like Yeezys, all of them. I think the yellow one might be the only Yeezy 350 I didn't get off Adidas. These are facts. This isn't just me talking. You know what I always do? I just sit there and keep clicking refresh the entire time. Like, I don't believe I'm in. I, I just keep clicking refresh until the system just grabs me. Pause. <laughs> I do. Like, I honestly do, and I, I am about, I can't remember the last easy I didn't get online. I didn't try for the Beluga 1.0, but I tried for the yellows, didn't get those every other one I've gotten. People hit me, oh, can you give me easy? Sure. Got you, fam. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, like, don't believe this stuff. This stuff is smoke screens. And me and George have said this on this podcast numerous times. If we had a shop, if I had a boutique and I got a hundred pair of let's use Yeezys because, you know, cats still like Yeezys. If I have a shop and I get 100 pair of Yeezys, best believe 20 of those are gone. I'm telling you now. If you ever come to the George and Greg G and G Sneaker Emporium, and we got a hundred Yeezys, or we tell you, yo, we only got fifty pairs. Oh, best believe, twenty of them are gone. Those are going to the homies. They are going to the homies. Every single person who's on the internet, on IG, who loves sneakers, who has any type of something to where you can provide it for the homies or good friends or family, and you're not doing it, slap yourself in half, okay? Slap yourself in half. Slap yourself in two-thirds. Facts, okay? Do it. Just slap yourself in half because if I have a store and I got 50 pair of Yeezys, best believe 15 of those, 10 of those, they're gone. They're going to family and friends, period. They're going to pay for them. They're not going for free. They're going to pay for them, but they're not getting raffle tickets. They, what size you want, cousin? I got you, cut. What size you want, best friend since eighth grade? I got you. What size is this podcast family? I got you. Believe it. But these stores, these boutiques, these friends, these people, they need to be better at setting or they need to start setting some type of rules that like when I give you something, don't post that stuff on social media. It's starting to become really annoying to see celebrities and people. I get, you know, somebody wearing it 
to the basketball, LeBron walking in the stadium with it, or Quavo on stage performing in it, or so and so. I get it, but I'm not trying to see regular like you know guy who has a lot of followers, you know, showing it on social media like three weeks before we got it. That just tells me that there is a few less than we expect when we cop. Like, I would tell all my friends, if I gave them pairs, let them pay for them, I gave them out the back door, whatever, and I gave them pairs, I would tell them, can you not post on social media until after the actual release? Just out of respect out of your regular customers. Like, I don't want to see that. Like, I feel it's mad disrespectful for like, you know, I, I get I give the homie ten pairs, you know. I know he need he gonna resell them. I got it. I give him ten pairs and he on social media stacked up, you know, we out here. Yo, you about to be out of cheer. Like, shut up. Like it, it, it's annoying. And it's like a big slap in the face, man. And it's a slap in the face be told to navigate like a human when you know pairs are going out the back, perfectly fine, because I would do it as well. But then you got cats sleeping on this dirty concrete. You got cats sleeping out in the cold weather. Cats sleeping out in the heat. Cats out here fighting, scrapping, lying, stealing, cheating, doing every single thing just to have something we're all addicted to. It's the modern crack era. (laughs) It just is. Like, sneakers are the the boy band of the 90s, you know, the, you know, Michael Jackson of the 80s and 90s, the cocaine of the 70s and 80s, the crack. People are willing to do whatever to get them. If you're sitting on five pair of zebras and you know a couple homies that need that wanted a pair and you ain't slanging them to them for retail. Bruh, you need to look at yourself in the mirror. Because that's what drives all this nonsense. I'm not blaming union. I'm not blaming boutiques. I'm not blaming everybody for 100% being responsible for a lot of the actions that we bring upon ourselves and a lot of the bad decisions that we make. I made the decision to go outside and lay on that dirty concrete that I saw the homeless man just peeing on last week. But today is good enough for me to lay down on and take a nap because I need Yeezy 2s, fam. 50% our responsibility. 50, 50% their responsibility. But do not send me a message telling me to act or navigate more human-like. You know what you guys should do? You guys should act more human-like and have more compassion for the people who support these places. I'm sorry. I can't come on here by myself every single week. Like, I'm talking about not, I'm talking my pocket, the podcast. Our podcast can't be the only one who needs to have these chit chats with these these entities like i'm sorry once you got in this hey look you can call it hating you can call it like yo that's messed up but once you started getting the first few tweets of people talking about half the screen not loading and and uh acting like bots should have canceled all orders sorry you should have You should have canceled all the orders and these boutiques within themselves. They need to keep they need to double or triple their production. I don't know how it works. I don't know anything like that. I'm in the what is the journalist field. I guess we call this the journalist field. I'm in the airwaves, the podcast field about a specific niche and a topic. I don't know about how a collaboration starts. How do you decide on what numbers to do? How you decide on price? How you decide on release? I'm not a part of that. I don't know it. In my mind as a regular consumer, I look at it and say, why don't you guys double this production or triple it? The boutique gets this third sneakers app or nike or reebok whoever gets this and then you spread the rest out through all these other smaller boutiques 20 pairs you know whatever it is like it just has to be a better way that this is conducted it just does and and that's all i'm gonna say that's all i gotta say like i said i'm not blaming union i'm not blaming anybody else i will tell republican sneakerheads shut your mouths all right
And for those who didn't miss it, who didn't catch it, a Republican sneakerhead is somebody who gets all their stuff for free. Generational privilege. You know, the homie hooks them up, you know, but they want to tell us, yo, you got to get out there and put in the work. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Shut up. All right. I'm not doing anything. I'm getting my cell phone. I'm going to give it a shot. And to see so many people that actually got through, had a shot and really didn't like. It's like it's like basketball. It's like the ball went through the net and someone jumped up and, and punched it back through the rim like goaltending. Like they did like. I don't like it. I, it's asinine, it's annoying, and it's too hard, and it just turns you off. I'm sorry. And everybody's sending this and tagging us on the resale ones. Cats is in other countries or whatever making cats do push-ups in them. We talked about this already on our show. The, the shoe is to combat resellers, yet the, you got to cop it from resellers and the shoe is like through the roof. Making cats do, you want to make me walk out the store in them, fine. That's the theme of the shoe. You want to keep the box, fine. But you're not making me go out and haul lumber and, and, and do push-ups and, and, and go skateboarding and, 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 and do some crossovers and stuff in them. You're not making me do that and take my money? You think you're about to make me do that and take my money? Jeez. I really do love doing this podcast. And shout out to George. Hope he gets better. That's my best, my best, my best, my family. Um, yo, think this podcast, Greg, no George, under the weather. Be back next week. Sneak this sneaker awards. Back in the building. A, 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 a. Appreciate everybody who follow, listen, subscribe. Always know and always remember for those long commutes, uh, those long drives, those time laying in bed when you can't sleep, those times when you just posted up in that waiting room waiting for those uh, lab results. Just think this podcast is on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Podbean, CastBox. We're everywhere. We're also on thesneakdisc.com. Uh, you can listen to our podcast right on our website. We also have some other content on there. We also have our Sneaker Hall of Flames, which we had, we actually didn't do one time this year. We might have to squeeze one of those in this year. Um, and like always, go to goat.com slash thesneakdisc. We appreciate GOAT. Um, you know, supporting the podcast. You know, go to the page, check it out. Um you know, obviously, you know, to find those perfect 100% authentic Jordans, Yeezy, and sneakers, you know, always go to GOAT.com. They have everything you need. Um, like I said, GOAT.com slash sneak disc. Uh, pickups for myself. I actually was influenced this week during pickups. Um, Sean Wortherspoon, who I don't really know nothing about besides round two and... Obviously, the Sean Weatherspoon Air Max hybrid, whatever it is. He took a picture from the view down, I believe. That's what you call it. A bird's eye view, I guess, but not that high. You know, whatever. And they've taken a picture of some stuff on the ground. I'm assuming at round two, some clothing, vintage clothing, or some Nike stuff that's going to drop. I don't know what it was. He was wearing Adidas Boost You Wear Level 2s, maroons, copped, some <laughs> joints, looked that fire in the picture i'm i rarely do that now i, I have actually know what i'm talking about i've done it plenty of times hopefully they aren't if they're not they're going back i uh, also got pink calabasas and i got um is it calabasas okay, continentals and then uh vault or yellow freeze continentals from um and obviously from GOAT. Uh, shout out for GOAT. Appreciate that. Uh, and then Lapstone Hammer Mud Dye Sweats. Holla and Socks. Can't wait for that. Um, I don't know if George got any pickups this week. I can't remember. I don't think he said anything. But obviously when he comes on next week and we do Think This Sneaker Awards December 4th, he will go through those again. Or he will go over his pickups. Um, kind of got a lot to talk about today. Not too much. Uh you know, obviously, you can tell I'm here by myself. 
I'm starting to feel angry about, you know, discussing the union Jordan release so early, but I'm just like, gee, like, get yourselves together. Uh, real quick, you know, one of the things we stopped doing jersey numbers and stuff like that, and there was something else that we were going to do, but I forgot all about it. But uh, me and George had agreed on that we would always do a, uh, for the time being, do a GOAT, a GOAT find. You know, and a GOAT find is like either something, you know, that's a great price typically than what you can find anywhere else or something you don't see often or just something super dupe, super duper dope for a great price. Uh, my GOAT find this week is a size nine gel sight Japanese denim on GOAT, brand new, has no original box. Size nine, 60 bucks, brand new, a very underrated. I'm not a fan of gel sites that much, but with the right color and materials, they look really dope. These joints got like polka dots in the back. It has Japanese denim in the front. It's got a little bit of like a, a pinkish haze with like a gum bottom. Them joints are fire. Uh, I don't know if they fit big, you know, or whatever, but I would have copped. I wear a nine and a half, ten. Uh, but that's a good thing that somebody should check out. And uh, if you wear that size, you should give it a cop. And like I said, that's goat.com slash sneak this uh, releases this week. So uh, obviously this is Thanksgiving week. And, you know, like I said, I'm very thankful for everybody who listens, you know, subscribe on iTunes and everything for the visual people uh, who need vid who need video. Obviously, we are on YouTube. We are on YouTube for the visual people. So obviously check us out. Subscribe. Uh, releases this week. So I'm going to combine them all. Not combine every single one, but I'm going to do the Jordan and Nike together uh, since it's Black Friday. And I'll definitely tell you this. This Black Friday is pretty weak. I can't off the top of my head think of any other Black Fridays that I thought were lit or cracking. Um, but there's really nothing that you're going to make, make me move for. Um I don't think. That's how I put it. I don't think. Um, Jordan Nike releases. So we got LeBron James 16, The Promise. Um, LeBron 16 is definitely in contention for Sneaker of the Year. Um, the Promise pair, oh, they're clean. They're cool. You know, obviously, The Promise is a representation of the school that he started in. Uh, I believe it's in Akron. I know it's in Ohio. Uh, and it's obviously a great thing of what lebron done with the school and this is a pair that if you love the 16 it's probably a pair you'd want to keep i mean want to grab uh i'm not a fan of this pair but i will tell you that george had texted me about the i had never seen the maroon burgundy with the leopard print in the back lebron 16 in person and he told me and said it was so fire he almost stole it i saw a kid wearing them at uh my son's baseball game i'm sorry son soccer those joints are Fire. Definitely copping those. Um, Kyrie Fives uh, come out this week. Black Magic. I don't know if that's... I didn't see that nickname on every site. I saw it on some sites. Let me explain something to you. Kyrie Irving is a weird person. All right. I don't think I have to tell you that, but he's a weird person. And with the stuff about the earth being flat and these beliefs and like the triangle with the eye on the sneakers and stuff, I'm not buying nothing from him with the name or term black magic, period. I believe in what I believe in. And let me explain something to you. It doesn't involve the dark arts. All right. The only arts I subscribe to is martial arts. And I don't even know how to do that. But I've definitely watched enough videos to jump kick somebody. Facts. I jump kicked Melvin in the chest. Sixth grade, he punched me in the face. I jump kicked him in the chest. He grabbed his jean jacket, cried, and jumped the fence. True story. That's a victory for me. I think in fights, I told my wife, I think I'm um, hmm, out of seven fights, one, four, three, two sucker punches, one. I think we just like, I think we got so sluggish, we just kind of like rolled over and was like, you good? You good? You know you both out of shape when you both, you're good, fam. You let go my shirt. You let go my shirt, fam. You let go my shirt. No, you let go my shirt. L let go my shirt, I let go your shirt. And then you just roll over and you leave. You know you really out of shape when it comes to fighting. It's like after you get into the fight or the scuffle, you shake hands afterwards. Like, you don't even like, but you don't shake hands out of respect. You just, I think, uh, you, anyways. React mid runners, fire. I personally are not a fan of the React 
87s, 55s. I think they're cool. I think the 55s might be actually better than the 77s to me, visually. Um, but these mid runner things, they look like it's like utility. They could almost look like ACG. These joints are clean. Am I paying full price? Absolutely not. But I think they're fire. I think they are something that you can't wear all year long. They they look winter. They look um, cold weather. They don't look like they're for uh, Arizona summers, you know, 125 degree weather. They don't look like that. They don't go too high. They're mids, but like it's something about them that gives you that walking on rough terrain kind of look, but them joints are fire. Um, Victor Cruz Air Force Ones, the vegetan color, I believe that's what it's called, and then the whites. Uh, they're cool. I mean, it's an Air Force One. <laughs> it's an Air Force One with Velcro. I, I Honestly, the amount of Air Force Ones that Nike still produces on a regular basis is crazy. Like, I feel like Nike sort of, when they felt the climate change on the SB, I feel like they kind of like really slowed up on the making of SBs. Air Force Ones had this small period where they stopped, and now you get on the sneakers app, there must be like eight versions for just women of Air Force Ones. And look, I don't know. Even when I would go to New York and the East Coast, I didn't see a lot of women wearing Air Force Ones uh, or girls wearing them. The only girls that wore Air Force Ones, they look like they were like the back of the hills were like at a slant, like because they've been wearing them joints mad crazy, and they knew how to fight. That was it. Like, I didn't know any Air Force girls or women copping Air Force Ones to look good or, or put a fit together. Now, that might be just strictly an East Coast thing. I know that is for the guys on the East Coast at least a while ago. But all these women Air Force Ones, Nike, chill. Like, relax. All right. Um, Jordan 11 for women, Lux. Uh, they're really going hard with women Jordan 11s too. And I will say a lot of these colorways do look a lot better than the ones they're providing for men that are alternative besides the retros. Uh, this colorway looks like a goldish, bronzy, olive-ish. They cool. And I'm sure some girls could make them look really, really good. I think Jordan 11s look, always look good on women. Um, but eh. And then, oh, the bread. If you want to say bread, black, red, Jordan, playoff Jordan, whatever you want to call it, um, dunks. I think they're SB dunk highs. And then there's like an Air Force Two that's like foam posit material. And they're not a pack sold to Gepard, but it's supposed to be like this rivalry pack. And I guess it's supposed to be Bulls and Orlando Magic. Look, I've watched a ton of basketball growing up, especially in that gold, golden era and still watch a lot of basketball. Orlando and Chicago had like one or two playoff series. You know, the one year they put the Bulls out when Jordan came back, we're in the 45, and then the Magic got swept by Houston Rockets, and then like maybe like one or two other like classic playoff, you know, battles or something like that. I believe the one with Nick Anderson missed all them free throws. I, I don't think that's the same one, but I think, look, nobody is sitting around reminiscing about the Bulls, Orlando Magic, rivalry there is nobody on planet earth going yo remember that bulls magic rivalry nobody adidas obviously the easy 350 v2 sesame i mean it looks clean in pictures i just I, i'm not i don't support easy anymore like that to go out and buy his product at least as of right now um i think that V2s are just too far gone. And there are too many, these tones are too similar. I think these are obviously a, a little bit darker than butters, but butters, whites, and these, they're too close on the wheel spectrum of beige, whites, yellows. Like they're just, I would love to see the set as well every single person that loves the v2 should have copped zebras if i didn't despise kanye so much i'd still have my zebras i love zebras zebras and beluga ones are the absolute best v2 out of all of them and i might give it up to the red stripe i'm not a fan of the 
the red lettering bread ones people love those but if you insist on having a yeezy 350 v2 you must have a zebra and i don't think a sesame is the one you must have it's just not uh and the ultra boost um 1.0 i believe it was 1.0 or maybe it's 2.0 i don't remember the gold metal pack um look i <laughs> i love these shoes i do uh i think it's 2.0 i believe i absolutely love the 1.0 and the 2.0 um ultra boost i do and i love this gold silver bronze pack i think it was one of the better ones um but <sighs> i don't know where adidas is headed with the ultra boost the pictures of the new ultra boost did come out eh, you know it is what it is but if you're already retroing like the original og with the purple cup in the back they come out december 4th 7th something like that you're already retroing like ultra boost to the direction or whatever is happening creative wise is whew, it's fading quick like it's fading you haven't even gotten your fifth installment out yet and you're already retroing now y'all gonna have to figure something out asap and then the creams come out this week too and to me creams you know creams is a must-have if you are an ultra boost connoisseur or even a casual ultra boost connoisseur we had them uh i don't know if we still i don't still have them i don't know if ryan or george had them or still has them but we had them and we did like them i didn't like them as much as others did um, and I would have kept them and I would have still had them. I still have certain ones that I felt were better, but they were going for so high at one point. I, there are certain shoes that I feel, and I think we knew they were going to retro again at some point, And I think that's why we got rid of them. I think we thought they were going to retro last year, but it ended up being in 2017, but it obviously was 2018. Um, I think cream ultra boosts are overrated, but if you're just a casual wearer, there's like one or two, three models that you should have, and cream is one of them. Uh, but like I said, once again, you're retroing your original ultra boost and stuff now. Pfft, I don't know where you're going. You're throwing all your apples into Kanye and Pharrell and whatever else. I mean, even Pharrell stuff is sitting now. Now, I don't know if that has to do with based off numbers or how they visually look, because a lot of them are like hard wears. Like, this last pack of four that came out, I liked them, but they had too much of a Native American Midwest color scheme to them, like teals and oranges and reds. Like it just looked real Oklahoma-ish. Like it just looked real New Mexico-ish. Like I, I didn't care for it. Um, and then 4D Future Crafts, which I have never tried for. A four. I think I tried for one raffle on end. On end in clothing.com never got it a future craft 4d they don't there's nothing to them that makes me want to cop like i don't look at those as like yo i must have i'd rather have boost um they don't look comfortable i think the uppers are dope but none of them are like fam they dropped today i've never tried to cop on adidas or i don't even know if they drop on adidas so i'm um, gonna power to people for that um and Puma. And I'm adding Puma this week because, you know, we, we go through a lot of the releases that, um, I guess you want to say the most popular. They're not, you know, I, we don't go through every one. You know, there's a plethora of other stuff. There's some BW hybrids coming out. There's some Vapor Max 2s coming out. There's a few things that are dropping this week other than what I just said. But the main ones that I talked about are the ones that people are going to go after or the most sought, sought after. Puma is dropping and shout out to uh mr red king mr underscore red king this cat might have uh, he might have the single-handed best puma collection of all time like i don't even know anybody else that i would even be able to compare it to like his puma collection on instagram follow him at mr underscore red king there's stuff on there that I'm like, yo, I've never even seen before. Like, his co collection is off the hook on Pumas. And even if you're not even that huge in Pumas, you got to respect this guy's collection on the, the stuff that he's showing. Like, some McQueen Pumas and stuff. I remember, like, a couple pairs. This cat has straight fire. Shout out to him. Uh, follow him, you know. Puma, 
there are people out here that are influencing. Like there are people out here who are regular people, better influencers than anybody. You can, I don't know a single person that owns a big Sean Puma. Not one. I don't know a single person. Like, yo, yo, you coming in big. Nobody wants a big Sean Puma. I seen nobody wants an Aton Puma. Nobody wants a basketball player Puma. So you know what? Take advantage of the individuals that are out here riding or dying for your brand. Cut them cats a check monthly. Uh, put them cats on minimum wage. You know, fly them out to an event. Make them work. Pass out some bags and stuff. Like get them. Some, like come on, man. Like these brands and stuff out here. You guys are missing out on a lot of opportunity to make a little dent in the competition and to cement yourselves as something that's like. Yeah, you know, we can mess with. We love them. We all love Puma. But like I'm telling you, this Mr. Underscore Red King, his collection of Pumas are crazy. All right. Like absolutely crazy. Shout out to him. Um, but Puma is dropping this week some RSX uh, Pumas clean. Some joints are fire. They have that retro dad shoe sort of feel look bulkiness them joints are fire here's my issue with them they're transformers one's optimus prime is one is bumblebee look man this is to this is the opinion of somebody this is uh, i have a co-host i have two microphones we have two cameras we have a laptop we have a computer this is just an idea coming from an, uh, an opinionated consumer. But all sneaker brands from Nike, Adidas, Reebok, Fila, Puma, Etna, I don't care what brand you are. It's over, like, enough with the, the collaboration of stuff. Like, I think there's only one brand that should be able to still do specific collaboration. That's Vans. Vans are the only ones. I don't want to see from nike puma any of those i don't want to see any more transformers i don't want to see any more marvel dc star wars none of that let vans have that to me mickey mouse i, I only want vans for that i don't want any i see mickey mouse a6 the other day like a a6 <laughs> we don't want it nobody wants mickey mouse a6 nobody wants star wars adidas anymore no one wants transformers anything anymore like, I think Transformers might have collaborated with every single company. Transformers is a trash movie franchise. That's one. The cartoons, you know, love them as a kid. And you could talk about them now. But I encourage everybody to go to YouTube and type in Transformer cartoons. It's weird. All right. All cartoons from back then are weird. They're classics, but them joints are weird. All right. Like, you watch them and you be like, I remember, like, I put my son... We're going to watch a cartoon. We're going to watch something. Yo, yo, you got to, oh, no, original DuckTales. Now, I still love it. DuckTales doesn't get old. But he's been really into the new DuckTales. I sat my son down next to him. I said, yo, watch. Dad used to watch this. Dad used to watch this. We we're watching it. And I'm still into it. But a little part of me was like, this is kind of trash. But I'm like, yeah, I'm still into it, you know. But a little piece right there in the middle of my chest was like, hmm. This is kind of trash, but still love it. It's a classic part of my childhood. Well, like I said, all you sneaker cats and everybody, we don't need any more Transformer collaboration. We don't need any more Marvel. We don't need any more DC. No more Star Wars. I don't need a Venom this or a Spider-Man that. And even after this, a Dragon Ball Z Adidas thing, we don't need Dragon Ball Z anymore. You don't got no more Mickey Mouse sneakers. We're done. Strictly Vans. That's it. Vans can have it all. And we can all buy vans. I believe that's it for releases. Uh, nothing. I'm. Oh, you know what else comes out? Red Jordan 12s. I don't have that on the list. I don't even know if I got it on the screen. But Red Jordan 12s come out. Um, no. Red Jordan 12s are about seven years too late. There is no sneaker brand. Man, I hate doing this, and I hate – our show is very unique. Like, we give real thoughts and opinions that we share with each other off camera. I'm not going to get on here and be like, yo, shout out to Nike for doing that. Thanks, Nike, for taking – I don't do, don't do that. But there is no need for any more all red shoes anywhere. 
I think they should just every brand should stop whatever the last they should only make all red shoes like of their old versions. Like Nike could only come out with Air Max Independence Day Reds, Yeezy Twos, Roche Runs, whatever they came out in all that's it. Don't make anything new all red. Nobody needs a Jordan 12 all red. Nobody. All right. We didn't need the blue. We don't need the red. Nobody. All right. There's only one person that needs the all red Jordan 12s, and that's the game. All right. Period. Um, Concord dropped. Surprise drop. Um, it's funny because. I could have copped them. My we we got new phones and stuff, so my Apple Pay and stuff wasn't set up. Um, and then I kept getting the error when I did set it up, and then, you know, it was a big mess. You know, it was one of those things where it was like, eh. Concord is just dropping randomly. It's more about just winning. Like, it's just to say you cop, you just won. You you don't really want them. You don't need them. That's all it was. It's just a copped, got them. That's all it is. It isn't about like. We all know that they're making so many pairs. It's not even funny. It's like, it, it, just wait. December 4th is literally next week. So, or right, right, right around the corner, whenever it is. Um, so, yeah, that was the only thing. I like surprise drops. I love surprise drops on sneakers. I like surprise drops on Kith. Um, I think that's just the better way to do it. Obviously, there's people within these companies that know when this stuff is going to drop. And they let their homies know, like, look, just to give you a heads up, they do. Don't let anybody from these companies tell you that they don't. None of us know. None of us have any idea. I, I'm waiting just like you. I got my cell phone out just like you. Man, I'm trying myself, you know. Shut up. They know when they're going to drop. They know what day. And they tell their friends, hey, yo, yo they're going to be dropping Concords. At about between the hours of noon and one, just have your phone ready. Just tell they do. What was my point? Um, I forgot my point, lost track of what I was saying. Uh, that's why I need George here, so he keep me on track. Um, oh, like I said, I, I, I like random drops, I feel like it catches a lot of people off guard who aren't prepared, and I feel like that's the most fair way. Um, because even for the cast that are like, yo, I was driving. Thanks a lot, Nike. Who, shut up. Like, okay. Like, you think that they're concerned with you driving down the... I, was, I left my phone in the car on the... Thanks, Nike. Thanks a lot, Nike. Yo, that's some bullshit. I was in a meeting. <laughs> People are so entitled. Like... You think Nike is like, yo, yo, don't drop it right now because typically people are in meetings between this hour. I'm on the West Coast. It's rush hour, so they're in track. Like, no. Like, get over yourselves. Um, what else am I talking about this week? Well, like I said, um, Concord drops. There's so many pairs coming out. It's like, yo, just sit back, relax, click your sneakers app, get in the quote unquote line wait your turn and then get the confirmation that says good job you got your pair confirmation is coming soon check your mailbox oh real quick i'm seeing on i'm seeing on social media <sighs> you know when something happens and you wonder who was in the room when it took place and why didn't somebody say, oh, you know what, fam? Don't do that. Because this could happen. Or somebody might feel this way. Or that might happen. Nike putting packages at your front door with a giant swoosh on the box now? Like, why don't you just put in the swoosh, take me now? Don't. Don't tell every don't tell everybody what's at my door. There are some people that might not even move. They see an Amazon package. I'm, like, ah, I'm not moving. You don't know what's in that box. But let me tell you something. You see a box with a swoosh on the side. <laughs> Stop it. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be stupid. All right. Um. I'm trying to think. 
feel like I had a lot of other stuff that I want to talk about. Oh, you want to know something? Oh, my goodness. You want to know what I'm talking about? Oh, and I really hate to, like, make this as if, like, I'm being... And I hate that sometimes our podcast and us individually can come off of if we know it all and we've seen it all and we like, but this article or interview on Complex from Matt Welty interviewing or talking to Don C might be one of the, and Matt Welty, I think, writes the safest articles and stuff all the time that just plays both sides i do this might be one of the worst interviews ever i've ever read like it's on complex you know go to google type in don c complex matt welty whatever you want to do nothing against matt welty but there are times where somebody is whack and this article is whack it just is or interview is whack this is what got my attention, okay? This is what got my attention. And, like, the fact that, I mean, I, I sat at my desk at work. I literally laughed out loud. Like, I'm going to read this to you guys. I'm going to read this in my professional read voice, okay? Here's the question. This is the question from Matt Welty that works at Complex. Nothing against him, but you don't make every shot. You missed on this one. Do you feel the need to compare to, I'm sorry, do you feel the need to compete with Virgil Abloh? Since you're good friends and both have collaborations with Converse, Nike, and Jordan? Don C. Oh no, not at all. I can't never outdo Virgil. He is way better designer than me. He is on another level. I just appreciate that I have him as a friend and somebody that I can bounce ideas off of because that could make me better. But I know when somebody better than me. What? But I know when somebody better than me. Lord, where's the editor? That's OK. I'm actually happy about that. So, yeah, I can't compete with Virgil. Let me explain something to you, Don C. I've been telling you that for about a year now. All right. I don't even got to tell you about that. You can't even compete with regular people I see making design stuff. You can't compete with FBCC. You can't compete with John Geiger. You can't compete with these other cats. Like, period. You're not a designer. You are the guy that, like, I look at Virgil because he has his off-white line. And look, everybody has inspiration. You pull from something that's inspiration. You can look at Virgil and say you pulled from that and made these off-white pair of sneakers. They obviously look like this. You pulled from that and made that shirt. Everybody uses inspiration. Don C doesn't use inspiration. Don C uses others' inspiration and just spices it up. That's why I get annoyed with other comp like do Anybody out here, first of all, the Just Don 2s, fire. Hands down, fire. But if you think somebody at Nike, I, I have a hard time believing that nobody at Nike could have thought like, yo, let's, let's put some premium leather on these joints and like, let's not color them white, let's color them green or blue or something. You're sadly mistaken. Like... The Converse came out today, the Just Cons, whatever, which is so apropos. I, I got that word from a friend of mine. Apropos means appropriate, I guess. I don't know. Um, because I call him con C, so like he's, he's a con artist to me. But flipping the materials and stuff on a shoe doesn't make you a designer. Let me let me make this very clear. Don C, you are nowhere. You're not even in the same atmosphere as a Virgil. Like you're not even in the same realm as a Virgil. And I'm not here to 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 deride Virgil. Like Virgil's taking Nike stuff, adding color to it, adding different materials. But he like sliced it up. Added some stuff, took this off, changed this up. He designed, he redesigned a shoe. Don C has never 
redesigned a shoe. He took a shoe, added a, a color and some leather and some some animal print and said, Don C, give me an extra four hundred ninety dollars. And let me explain to you why I, I feel like this this read up is is, is awful. Um, and I'm look when you're somebody at complex, when you're at something like a major outlet, like complex, still asking people questions like, you know, what was it at? Let me see. Still asking questions, still asking somebody like a Don C who has been in the game for this long. How many sneakers do you have in your collection? <laughs> what are you talking about? Complex? Who cares? What, what, who cares? Like, I know regular people that got more pairs in their closet than Don C. Like, stop it. Like, who cares? Like, oh, actually, never mind. It says he has ten to 12,000 pairs. Either way, who cares? All right. Like, I don't care. People need to stop asking, yo, how many collections do you got? Yo, um, how do you feel about just Don knockoffs? How do you think he, how do you think he feels? What are you talking about? I feel thrilled. I'm extremely happy. I love seeing all my fakes on the, on websites, you know, something that I, you know, added color to and print. It's fantastic. These questions are awful. Like people need to go back or become, or go to actual journalism school to do stuff like this. Like, these questions are whack. How do you feel about the bait trucks in Chicago? What? Bruh, you asked about 10 questions and seven of them are stupid. What's your first memory of Converse? Man, shut up. Chuck Taylor is most likely. Anyways. Um, shout out to um, David Blackman. He is the, I think, founder, creator of um, Echelon. Uh, magazine, Epsilon, um, online magazine. Uh, he's somebody I talk to regularly. He sent this to me. I didn't get the chance to respond to him, uh, but he sent this to me uh, in discussion of Sneaker of the Year. He, I guess, wrote this up in around 2017. I want you guys to check it out. It's Ep epsilonmagazine.com, I believe. I have it on the screen if you're watching the video. And uh, if you guys are on social media and stuff, I'll make sure you know you guys get to it. It is a fantastic breakdown on how the decision of sneaker of the year should be made. And we take this in consideration when we're up here talking about this every single year doing the annual Sneak to Sneaker Awards. We we take a lot of this in consideration. Um, I do feel like that even with, you know, George likes to talk about recency, bias, biasness, whatever it is, bias, whatever, uh, which is true. A lot of times it's hard to even remember what came out this year. It's hard to even take in consideration um, some other sneakers or something you might be um, not even thinking of or considering because the year is so long and so much stuff comes out. Uh, he's basically broke the article down. It's sort of like the art of making the decision on sneaker of the year. And he broke the article down and I, I, I was going to hit him and call him, but it was sort of like a last minute decision. Like I was like, ah, I'm already here set up. Uh, but I'm definitely going to have him on the podcast soon. Oh, we we're supposed to shout out to soul food brand. We we're supposed to have them on the show this week. Um, something happened it just i you know it's my fault i kind of dropped the ball on it i forgot you know his kids were driving me nuts and you know so it's definitely my fault um and i should have hit him up just to let him know so uh but they will be on i will probably have soul food brand on december i don't like sneaker of the year and i feel like this is the year where sneaker of the year is going to have to be something hyped like i'm i'm not gonna be able to avoid it uh, it's going to end up being an off-white something. It's going to end up being, you know, a denim Levi, which I kind of think denim Levi 4 is the blue ones might be my favorite. I would love for a new model GR something to be sneaker model of the year. There's a lot of things out there. I thought Vapor Max should have been last year, and I can't remember what won last year. But, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in... And in the categories for what we're gonna do this year for Sneaker Award, we're gonna break them down. You know, we're 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 adding in 
collaboration sneaker of the year. Well, actually, I think we had that already. I think we already had collaboration sneaker of the year. And but I think we're gonna maybe add that in, maybe if it's not in there, and maybe retro of the year. Um, and I posted that question asking, can a retro be sneaker of the year? And when I met by retro was not necessarily the model. I am fine with a model being revamped, even color, whatever. But somebody had said Black Cement Threes should be sneaker of the year for 2018. Black Cement Threes are fire. The quality is what we wanted. It was everything that people who were Jordan Three connoisseurs enjoyed, loved about the shoe came out this year in 2018, and I respect that. But the shoe did come out in 1989 or whenever year it was. I feel like it was probably, maybe, possibly sneaker of the year then. I mean, the shoe has released. You can almost argue it could. It could. Some of certain sneakers could be sneaker of the year every year. People are gonna say Concord Elevens are sneaker of the year. Like no, Concord Elevens have released three, four times. Like, no, they're not sneaker of the year. Concord 11s are the most iconic basketball sneaker of all time. Maybe iconic sneaker of all time. It's the most recognizable by moms, aunts, cousins, nephews. Everybody recognizes a Jordan 11 Concord, period, whether they like it or not. Um, but I encourage everybody to go on the website and read this article. Um, Gosh, I wish he was like in town. I'd love to have him on that episode next week if uh, David was in town. But shout out to David Blackman. Go follow him on social media. Uh, go to his page, uh, his website, Epsilon Magazine. He writes about a lot of stuff. So this is another platform and brand that we need to support more. I added it in my bookmarks today as one of my favorites. I'm going to go to it every single day just like I go and visit all these ridiculous sites that I do. All the ones I hate, but this is all we have. And I go visit them. So I need to do better as myself as an individual going to visit other people's sites and stuff that they're working on. Um, I'm branching out into watching other people's YouTube videos. Shout out to Sneakers Up. Um, I believe it's Sneakers Up. If it's not, I apologize. Uh, it's two guys. They do like a little, I don't want to say a show, but they do videos and they go through sneakers and stuff. And there's some cool cats, you know. So uh, I support them. You know, hopefully they just keep going. You know, and I think, you know, a lot of people need to realize, and this is experience from us. You know, we definitely have an opportunity to right now that uh, we're taking advantage of, you know, with GOAT. And I'll be honest with you, I had it had been left my mind of the possibility of uh, getting a sponsor or getting any looks or anything from anybody else. Because, like I said before, I'm talking about the union release. This sneaker community is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Like, if there's anybody who feels like you could bump them out the way, they're not going to lift you up. So I don't expect the complex to find me or any other show and lift us up. They got full size run. They can't. It will go against their own self-interest. Now, maybe if they trash that show and was like, no, we're putting our backing into another show. Fine. But I think a lot of people need to realize that they're not going to get these looks from these. I've already realized it. You know, it's going to be smaller entities, you know, bigger companies outside of the blog world that is going to give you these looks. So uh, shout out to Dave. Uh, Black Men and Epsilon Magazine, and shout out to uh, Sneakers Up. You know, it's a new YouTube. Check them out. Uh, some cool cats, like I said. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I really didn't have much to talk about today. Um, like I said, you know, uh, go to goat.com slash sneak disc. Uh, that's G O A T dot com slash sneak disc. Uh, if you go to the site, definitely be supporting our show go on there take a look you know create an account you know sell some sneakers do what you want um it's a great site it's all about sneakers you're not your page and stuff isn't loaded up with a bunch of nonsense scrolling across the screen and foolishness it's black and white there's sneakers there's prices there's the opportunity to offer and there's used sneakers on the world a lot of people don't realize that goat has used sneakers and used sneakers are um you know, I don't like to say another man's trash and the man's treasure, but it's essentially what it is. You know, I go in there and I can see something that, you know, the life might be gone compared to somebody else. But you give them joints a good mop up. You then got yourself something nice, you know, something you can walk around in and, you know, chill with the family and whatnot. Uh, like I said, George isn't here today. He's feeling under the weather. He'll be back next week. Excited about doing sneakers of the year. I think we're probably doing it a week or two a little earlier than usual. But I'm definitely excited to do that, and I'm definitely excited to hear the opinions of others and see what else uh, anybody else thinks of. Uh, I'm trying to think what else, you know, sports-wise. Oh, I'll be in Dallas, you know, my yearly Dallas Cowboys trip. I'll be in Dallas December 7th through the 10th, I believe. Um, 
out there going to watch the Cowboys versus the Eagles because the Cowboys are winning now. And I am ecstatic. And, you know, speedy recovery. You know, Alex Smith broke his throwing leg, whatever. I'm sorry, that was really jerky. I don't know why I said that. That, that was a cheap shot. But the Cowboys might win the division now because the Eagles are trash. The Redskins are not going to win without Alex Smith. And the Giants are the Giants. They just got – they just do one-handed catches and dance. That's all they got. So, um, like I said, I'll be in Dallas December 7th through the 10th. So, I don't know. I might do a podcast out there. I even looked up a studio in Dallas I might go to, do a podcast. So, if there's anybody in Texas, I might hit up, see if you want to pull through, do an episode uh, with your boy. Uh, uh, let me think. Sports. Sports are weird. Uh, NFLs. Well, that game last night, Chiefs-Rams, my God. God, like lived up to every single thing that we all hoped it did. It was phenomenal. Um, the Chiefs, Rams, I, I'm, I'm excited to just watch them for as long as possible. Like, I mean, that was great. Like, I'm telling you, like, man, uh, NBA is whack. It's just regular. Like, it's not exciting I'll tell you, there's a lot of stuff in the NBA. The NBA, I think, needs to, like, wrap up some teams. Like, there are a lot of teams in the NBA that I think if they had a press conference today and said we decided to, you know, get rid of these teams, you know, shut these teams down and, and close them and move on, I don't think anybody would make that big of a fuss. Um, Wizards. I think if they shut the Wizards down and said, ah, DC doesn't need a team, I don't think that many people will mind. Um, Jeez, who else? Hornets. I don't think anybody. Kimball Walker is out there balling. But I think with the Hornets shut down, nobody would care. Pistons, I don't think anybody would care. Kings, I don't think anybody would care. The Nets, I don't think anybody would care. I want to say Grizzlies, but, eh, I, I think. Their, their fan base is pretty I mean actually all these teams have good fan bases but eesh, I mean you might even want to shut down the Atlanta Falcons the Atlanta Falcons might be historically one of the I'm sorry not Falcons Atlanta Hawks the Atlanta Hawks might be one of the historically one of the most disappointing team I think the Atlanta Hawks in us to a certain extent are the Buffalo Bills of the NBA like they just could never get over the hump. Even the teams that were, like, pretty good in the last, like, four or five years, they just know. And now, oh, my gosh, like, I heard a dumpster fire. Um, I do like Trey Young, though. Trey Young is my guy. Pause. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Man, sorry about that. I didn't mean to yawn on here. Man, somebody had uh, mentioned that last week. We apologize. If we yawn or whatever on the podcast, but me and George start our days. I start my day at 3.30 a.m. every single morning, and we're here reporting the podcast at like 8 o'clock at night. Like, we haven't been home yet. So even right now, I got to work tomorrow this morning at 4.30, and right now, Arizona time, it's 7 o'clock. So I haven't been home one time today, and I live about an hour away 45 minutes away from the podcast. So I got a long drive home. I go home, stay up all night and edit, you know, because I want the show to be out as soon as possible for everybody to indulge. Uh, Thanksgiving is coming up this week. I uh, hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, something I'm thankful for is definitely my family, uh, my wife. Um, you know, I'm definitely thankful for my wife and my kids. Like, you know, I'd encourage anybody, man or woman, man, just really enjoy your wife and your kids, your husband, like really understand that like there's a lot of people out here in bad situations that um, they didn't expect to be in at certain points. And there are a lot of people out here, you know, not appreciating the situations that they do have, man. I love seeing people on social media with their wives and look, I know people don't want to put their kids on social media and stuff, but when I do see people with kids on social media, I enjoy seeing it. Like, you know, enjoy seeing people out and about in Disneyland and just at the park and going to do stuff and at breakfast. And, you know, shout out to my guy Swagzilla. Like, you know, I enjoy that. I enjoy seeing kids dressed up, you know, as their dad's favorite team. They have no idea who's on the team, but they're dripped in the the latest you know Bengals gear you know whatever 
uh, be thankful for everything. You know, I think one thing that I do, I'm very, very thankful for, like I said, my family, my kids, my, you know, mother, you know, still have my mother alive, you know, to this day. My father died when I was young, you know, uh, having extended family, having, you know, these situations. And um, I'm thankful for the podcast. I'm thankful for people who listen. This isn't. <laughs> this is just regular guys talking and i'm thankful for george you know for riding it out you know sticking it out you know i'm thankful for ryan for the time he was on the show you know i definitely appreciate ryan being on the show um but you know i'm thankful for george you know being a part of it you know me and george when it comes to the show we're on different spectrums of what like the listeners you know here but it makes a great team and like i said i'm just thankful for all you guys who support us um on a weekly basis and you know even when we don't do a show like getting the messages like fam you're messing up my week i apologize for that but it, it feels good that you're able to create something like that that somebody enjoys you know enough to send you a message like yo what are you doing um that's all i kind of have um like I said, I think for everybody, I think for everybody, have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your families. Spend time with your loved ones. Uh, take it easy. Don't worry about sneakers this week. I know Nike, somebody's going to try to slip in, slip in a surprise drop somewhere, some turkey fives or some something stupid. Um, but, you know, I encourage you, try to ignore it this week. You know, just, just give it a shot. Uh, that's Sneak This. Bye.